Could 2024 be the year where California Republicans finally break the Democrats' supermajority control on state government? Coming up, I'm going to share some really exciting data from the March primary that suggests that Republicans could do quite well in November. And I'll tell you how you can join the fight to break the Democrats' stranglehold on our state government. Coming right up. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and the Democrats are in complete control of state government. You can see it in the form of their radical uh, extremist policies. But the March 2024 primary that we just held uh, reveals a path for Republicans to break the supermajority control that Democrats have on state government and finally become relevant again for the first time in many, many years. Uh, I'm going to share that data with you in a moment, and I'll tell you how you can join the fight to make um, uh, our state political system more balanced in November with these wins. Uh, but let me first start out and, and define what is a super supermajority. Uh, a supermajority is when, when one political party controls so many seats in the legislature that the other party is completely irrelevant. And right now, uh, based upon our, our um, constitution and the various rules of the legislature, and statutes. Um, Any time Democrats control two thirds or more of the seats in in both chambers, they have a supermajority, which means that there is no real way for Republicans um, uh, to to stop bad things from happening. Uh, for example, in in the legislature, if uh, Democrats have a two thirds supermajority, they can impose taxes on you and me at any time. And that's how the car tax and the gas tax were imposed in 2018. Uh, the Democrats were able to get a two thirds vote and impose those bad tax increases on uh, California voters without a vote of the people, by the way. Uh, two thirds vote also means that they are able to override the governor's veto. So the governor is pretty much irrelevant. Um, you know, sometimes a governor is going to be the, you know, even from the same party can be the only sane person in the, in the mix, not Gavin Newsom. Uh, and so the two thirds vote is crucial uh, in, in terms of creating some balance in Sacramento. And you can't get to a majority until you first get out of the, the, the super minority status that you're in. So in the state Senate, there are eight Republicans, but there are 40 seats. So Democrats have 32 seats. So they have a big super majority in the state Senate. It's a little closer in the state assembly where there are 80 seats. Republicans control only 18 of those seats, meaning 62 seats are remaining with the uh, the Democrats. But the March 2024 primary that we just held shows a path for Republicans to break the supermajority. It actually produces a total of 12 seats that they can win in the assembly to become relevant again in Sacramento. I want to share with you this uh, article on our website reformcalifornia.org. That's reformcalifornia.org. Here it is. Uh, primary surprise, California Republicans have a path to end the Democrats supermajority in 2024. And on this article, we give you the list of the seats that I think are most competitive and can be flipped in the November election. Uh, now, what is a flippable seat? It's defined as any seat where the party that's challenging uh, the, the, the uh, uh, party that holds the seat is uh, within seven points. So if you're 43% or higher, it's a, it's a competitive seat. Uh, now, let me just put a caveat here. The seats that I'm going to give you that are flippable, they are flippable despite the fact that Republicans did not really run a campaign in these seats. Uh, some of the candidates are meh, although I like a lot of the candidates in these seats. Uh, so the Republican Party needs to do a better job of recruiting, training, and mentoring candidates uh, for these seats. All seats, by the way. I don't I don't believe that any seat should ever be given a free pass. We have to have a quality, good candidate in every seat. Uh, but secondly, the uh, uh, candidate has to be trained on how to run a good campaign. And again, in most of these seats, none of the candidates ran any campaigns whatsoever. And finally, we need money. We need to get the resources so that the, camp, the candidate can get their message out. Uh, even the best run grassroots campaign still is going to need some outside uh, funding to do ads, TV ads, mailers, and whatnot. 
And so I want you to understand that I think the picture is even better than the March primary results show. I think there are seats that are 40% and higher that are actually, in my book, competitive. But I'm only going to give you the ones that are 43% or higher for the Republicans, uh, meaning that um, the, the supermajority absolutely can be broken in 2024 if we get our act together and run good campaigns. So the first thing is that Republicans hold 18 seats in the assembly. They need 27. 27 seats is the n magic number to break the supermajority. That means they need nine more seats. Uh, well, what do we have to flip? Uh, well, before we get to flip, what do we have to hold? There are four seats that we are we were worried about in this election that could have flipped to the other side. District 7, Josh Hoover in Sacramento won 52.6%, a good number, but we're, he's not out of the woods. Greg Wallace in Riverside, District 47, only 48.5% of the vote. He's got a lot of work to do, and I'm worried about that seat. District 70, look at Tree Ta in Orange County. In the Westminster Fountain Valley area, 59.5% of the vote. That's landslide numbers in that seat. Good work, Trita. And then, of course, a District 74, my good friend Lori Davies, South Orange County, North uh, San Diego County, won 55.4%. Not out of the woods, uh, but uh, a solid showing for her. I think all four of these seats can and will be won with good campaigns. Now we need nine more seats, right? Well, here's a list of 12. 12 seats that were within that seven percentage point uh, marker that I said would make a seat competitive. And remember, these candidates really did not run campaigns with rare exception. Um, District 27 in Central Valley, I'm very excited about this one. Joanna Garcia Rose got 51% of the vote up against the incumbent Democrat that only got 49% of the vote. How embarrassing. Robert Rosas won 42.8% in his district. Uh, in District 36 in Riverside, Jeff Gonzalez advanced to the runoff. Republicans got 46.2% of the vote. They only need 3.8% more. Paul Andre Marsh only needs 3.3% uh, more in District 39. Patrick Lee Gibson needs only 0.2% more. Ted Norblum, uh, he won 45.5. Uh, 45, 40, he needs four and a half points more. Nick Wilson is right at that 7% number uh, down in. Um, uh, Los Angeles and uh, San Bernardino. Uh, District 56, Jessica Martinez advances the runoff at 43.7. Leticia Castillo in Riverside is only one and a half points away from winning. Uh, also in Riverside, District 60, Ron Edwards goes to the runoff and Republicans are within 1.9% of winning that seat. Uh, District 73 in Orange County, the Irvine area, Scott Poder is running uh, in, the, in the runoff with um, only needing 6% more of the vote. And look at there, Christy Bruce Lane, only a half a percent needed to win the seat in San Diego, the 76th Assembly District. Look, these seats are eminently winnable. My biggest concern is that we don't have the California Republican Party in any shape whatsoever to put up a, a good fight. Frankly, they can't find their ass with a search party and a map. They're dominated by slick, high-paid consultants that get funded to fail. And so I don't think that we're uh, going to be able to look to the California Republican Party to do much in these seats. We have to do this on our own. It's why we started Reform California. It's the grassroots campaign that will win the day and take back our state. Uh, and we'll basically show the Republican Party what it needs to do more of. Um, I always say that if you create poster children of success, other people will imi uh, imitate success. And uh, hey, that's what the goal is, is to get everyone working together and walking down the same path. And the best way to do that is to start flipping seats and showing a model for how we can be successful. But all these candidates are going to need your support. That's why I gave you the list. So if you live in one of those districts, you need to get involved. Even if you don't live in one of the districts, donate to these candidates online, but also go and if they're if you're nearby any of the districts, sign up and volunteer. Uh, yeah, I know that you might say, well, it doesn't help me with my representative. The way we're going to get back into the majority in California is flipping one seat at a time and pushing the battle uh, ground. Um, the, 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 the war has to go onto different battlefields. Right now, these 12 seats are the battlefields. Actually, 12 plus the four we have to retain 
Uh, these 16 seats are the battlefield in California, and there's enough of these seats to go around for everyone to uh, find a useful role to be part of this effort. Of course, I'm running for the 75th Assembly District, and I'm going to need your help because the Democrats are trying to create havoc in my race so that I'm not able to go and travel the state to help these folks out. So please chip in a contribution to this entire effort to take back our state. Go online to reformcalifornia.org, reformcalifornia.org, smash that contribute button and chip in whatever you can. Stay in, informed on what we're doing at Reform California by signing up for our newsletter. And of course, you can stay informed by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification button. Every day at five o'clock, we give you a new podcast on the top news stories of the day. With that, good news from the March primary. Uh, we have a path to break the supermajority in California, stripping the supermajority from the Democrats, making Republicans relevant again. And that will be the first step we need to get to in order to then pivot and try to get back a majority in the state. My friends, it will happen, but it won't happen without you. So join the fight at reformcalifornia.org. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.